Okay, it's about time for uh, GT3 to get uh, get a little bit of love here. So I did the radar detector this weekend. I did um, cell phone mount, changed the oil, and uh, now I'm gonna put the DSC controller in, which means I'll need to go take the seat out and uh, install the controller, put the seat back in. Uh, but what I wanted to do first was do a before and after. I wasn't able to do this on the, uh, on the Corvette because the suspension was, uh, I thought the suspension was jacked up. It was actually the steering, the steering rack or column was, I guess it was the steering shaft is contacting the header. So I couldn't go do like a before and after test. Uh, and so I want to do a, just a quick little driving impression test here. Talk to you about how, um, you know, what that's like. Uh, and then go change the DSC and go out and do an immediate drive afterwards. So we're not going to do any crazy driving here. Uh, the car isn't warm yet. But I just want to talk you through my impressions. I mainly am just kind of getting a gauge here for the way the car is now and then what it feels like. I'm not adjusting anything on the suspension. Uh, because, um, like on the Corvette, I had done a whole new lowering suspension alignment, the whole deal. So this is stock setup, stock height, stock alignment. Uh, and then we're going to go right to DSC controller and just do it before and after. Uh, the one thing I've got to get clarification on is when we're doing the, um, uh, when I lower it, so I'm going to lower the front end a bit. When I do that, what happens to, uh, to, to the DSC controller? How does it adapt to that? Does it do it on the fly? Is it smart enough to do that? Uh, I've uh, read conflicting things that say you, you need to make manual adjustments if you lower it or you don't. Um, I just want to put the box in, have some improvement, uh, and deal with their settings because, you know, they take these cars to the track and do hundreds of laps to figure out what, you know, what's the best setup or what's the best tuning. Uh, and so the, the basic concept here is you put the box in and just stick with what they say. Uh, now, you know, if you were doing a lot of laps and doing and spending a lot of time on the track, I mean, these cars have fully adjustable coilovers, fully adjustable camber, um, so you can, you can really set these up considerably more aggressively. Uh, remember that the Porsche engineers have to make compromises for street versus, you know, performance. And so they have to pick a, a happy medium. Uh, and so there's always ways to improve what the way they've set the car up. That's why they've given us adjustments. So all the Porsche purists uh, thinking that the uh, Porsche engineers are infallible, that why would you change an exhaust or adjust or update anything? I mean, it's no different than putting in a cell phone mount or a radar detector. Um, there are little things you can improve that uh, you know, the, either the factory just didn't consider or didn't, um, you know, couldn't, had to make a compromise on. And so ride height is one of them. And so I'll raise the, or lower the front a little bit, as low as I can go. The RS has a wider, uh, wider front tire than the, than the GT3. It's a 265 instead of a 245. So we don't have as much room to lower the car as we did while doing a GT3. Otherwise you'll start rubbing. So I'll lower it a little bit, kind of play with it, see where I can do, what I can get without rubbing and having to run aggressive camber. I've gone with more aggressive, a more aggressive camber setup on the lower suspension, and I just didn't like it as much. So this is a good road to test the car on here, as long as Grandpa doesn't, uh, Grandpa Trump in front of us doesn't uh, go too slowly. So the thing I notice on the on the dot two versus the dot one. So you know my 2016 RS, um, I feel like I was better behind the wheel on that car than this one. Uh, what they did is they stiffened this front spring, softened uh, softened the rear sway bar, uh, and so the car has uh, I guess both sway bars are softened. So stiffer springs, softer sway bars and so less aggressive sway bars, and so we end up with um, slightly different sprung suspension. So it handles quite a bit differently that you would notice if you got in the cars back to back or if you owned one for a period of time. I feel like I was a lot faster in, even though this car is clearly faster, has faster lap times, uh, I can tell that in the, in the right hands, 
uh, the way that this suspension is set up that this car would be faster. But for me, I feel like you need to be more skilled. I feel like this car bounces around quite a bit more than than my uh, my, my dot one did. The way that they've you know tuned the suspension. Part of it could also be tires. This has uh, the Dunlop tire, Dunlops instead of um, uh, Cup Twos, but yeah, you know, they do say that you know lap times there are, are pretty much the same on Cup Twos versus the Sport Maxes. But I just feel like I feel like turning is better on this car. But again, I feel like it's lighter. You know, it's, it feels lighter in the front end to me. Uh, and uh, again, I can see how that probably f is faster, but in the hands of a novice, uh, it's not—it's not as easy to handle. You know, like uh, the—you know—the I don't think I've ever gotten to the limit in a GT3, but you know, at limit, my, at the limit of my abilities handling, it's just not—it's um, not as easy to manage. Uh, and so I'm interested to see how the DSC controller uh, reacts to that. You know, these cars don't tram line. You know, like the Corvette will follow the grooves on the road. They're just, the steering is probably the best electric steering on the planet. Now, again, I don't have a lot of Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren time, but the, um, in general, I think, uh, I think the steering on these is, you know, yeah, I never like get in and say, oh man, I wish it had uh, hydraulic steering. So, you know, when I first got the car, it, it's so, it, it made me put the car on the lift to make sure the shipping blocks weren't still in the springs. You know, they put these blocks in the springs to keep it from, you know, bouncing around on, on certain cars. I don't know if these, these ship with those. Uh, but I, I, I just wanted to check that because it does feel quite a bit, I don't know why I call it bouncy, but it just feels lighter than, than, the, um, than, the, than the previous generation. You know, so when I'm, when I'm going around, you know, and uh, gripping into a turn when I, when I hit the apex and come out, I feel much faster coming out. But going in, I feel a lot, lot, lot less confident. It, it's almost as if the car kind of jumps, jumps into the corner, jumps to, into the apex at, at initial turn in, where uh, where my my dot one would kind of glide into it. So I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, but it's just not as um, it's not as confidence inspiring to me as the uh, as my my 2016 was. This is a 2019. So a 991, I'm always saying that, 991.1 or dot one, if you want to sound cool, cool and incorrect. A 991 dot one is a, is a 2016 GT3 RS. A 991.2 is this next generation. Same thing like a 997, there was a 997.1 and then a 997.2 with some you know some improvements so this car has a different suspension different engine um let's call it a different suspension setup uh different you know different spring rates different sway bar sizes but i did my, learn my lesson on my uh, my dot one rs and that i started messing with things i just for every t every time you do mess with a Porsche engineer setup, you, there are trade-offs. So although it may turn in better, may feel, may handle a little better at limit, I mean, I'm not getting to the limit anyway. So it's uh, see coming into the turn, I just don't feel as confident. But coming out, I feel a lot quicker. I feel bad for these people. I keep driving down this road. Braking is the same.
again, I can tell right there, I can tell, you know, I could take that turn flat out if I wasn't such a sissy, like full throttle, just flat out. Uh, I always break into it. Um, plus I'm on the street. So I just don't feel confident. I wonder if it's the tires too, like, I need to, um, again, I need to take this car to the track, but I just, it's a $238,000 car that I'm just not really interested in doing that. I can handle it well enough to enjoy it, to do, you know, a little bit of, you know, baby spirited driving and, you know, and call it, call it what it is, call my driving what it is. So we're going back to the garage. I'm going to put the uh, put the controller in. We'll make the same route back to the house. Grab some lunch, uh, and uh, while I'm making the same drive back, I'll give you my you know impressions. I'm pretty sure when you put the DSC controller in, it's instant. Like there's no like acclimation time. I think that the key parameter settings changes the you know the active dampers uh, changes the way. Wait, do these? I believe these cars have active dampers. Um, Otherwise, a DSA controller wouldn't do much. Uh, so, so it would change the active dampers and how they react to, you know, compression rebound and all of that stuff. So, um, obviously, it's not going to change ride height or, or it's not going to change any sort of um, other settings uh, to, uh, you know, to spring rates. Uh, but it will also change your your stability control and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I really need to, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do a follow-up on this, but I need to really follow up with DSC and become a bit more proficient in what the heck's going on here and talk a little bit more intelligently about it. But this is my initial reaction. So if you've never seen a DSC controller, here's how it comes now. I'd originally uh, gotten a 991.1 and it's different. Uh, the axle lift is very different on a .2. It's a different, uh, one's hydraulic and the other is air. I think this one's hydraulic. So, here's what the controller looks like. You got a couple of stickers. I don't do stickers. Um, they have an installation guide, which we won't need because I already know how to do this. And then here's what the box looks like. It looks a little different for each, each car, uh, but this is what the Porsche box looks like. So now it has the DOT2 proper firmware, and uh, and so it'll be a direct plug-in right into the car. And so what I need to do first is uh, I'm going to take the passenger seat out because now I have a roll bar in there. It's going to be really hard to get back there. And uh, I'd actually forgotten and left the piece out when I did the roll bar, so i make it a little easier, but I want to get that piece back in place. So let's get started. So I'm sure I could just you know, fumble my fat rear end into the back there, but I think it's going to be smarter. Just take the passenger seat out. That way I have plenty of room to get back in there and do what I need to do. Uh, this is a, uh, you got to get one of these, I'm telling you, a scan grip line light from my store. So freaking good. It's only like, it's like 170 bucks or something like that, and it's amazing. I actually ran it over with the car, and it still works fine. So there's only a slight little crease. Uh, so let's pop, uh, pop the, the front trunk and... Uh, Get our uh, battery disconnected. Oh, I forgot to mention, you gotta, you wanna disconnect the battery, otherwise you're gonna get an airbag light that you won't be able to reset, and you'll have to go to the darn dealership to have reset. Uh, I still haven't figured out my my tool, I forget what it's called, the uh, Porsche scan tool thing in order to reset codes like that. I need to reset the service light as well, so I gotta get, uh, I think it's a durametric tool uh, that I've gotta get set up. So let's uh, let's get the battery disconnected. I don't think I've mentioned this, but uh, I have this in uh, previous my previous uh, GT3, the actually the the regular GT3, the 2014. Uh, this is a factory Porsche. Actually, sold it to my buddy Chris. Well, I bought another one. The reason why I got rid of it was because I'd put an amplifier here up front, uh, and so it's just a nifty little uh, plastic compartment, that uh, little bin that uh, really cleans that up. And so to get to the battery, really simple. Porsche fashion, everything's put together properly. Just pop this out, and battery's right in here. I'm going to disconnect the negative so I don't end up with an airbag light. All right, so there's a external Torx unit E12 uh, that are nicely angled outward, which makes it easy to get the seat out. 
Uh, and then there's a uh, underneath here. See that yellow plug? You have to pop that off. It actually, um, it, 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 there's a release mechanism on it. And then the seat comes out really simply. I don't even think I'm going to detach the seat belt. I'm just going to set the seat on the side here because it's going to be a quick in and out. All right, so you can see four, four bolts, nice and easy. I'm just going to set the seat right there because this should be, I need to keep my mouth shut, but this should be an in and out. So now I need to pull back the carpet because the DSC control is right in the middle there. And there it is. This box right here. All I did was just pull the carpet up. This carpet is really pretty remarkable because it, I drove around without it in the car and my gosh, it was like, I thought about leaving it out. <laughs> Let's a lot more noise come in the car and the engine's right there. So you see this thing kind of opens and closes. So what you're doing is you're pushing it. You can't do it with one hand. Anyway, it's pretty self-explanatory that this thing will push on and close as we put the DSC controller in place. And that's the factory Porsche box. All right, so the new box. So you can see as you push, it grabs it, snaps back in place. Man, it's just a genius little design. Instead of goofy Molex plugs, this little angled guided design. We take the box and we put it back where it belongs. Okay, we're all buttoned back up back there. All right, we're all buttoned up with the proper pieces in place. And so now we're gonna put the seat back in and go for a drive. All right, that's it. Now, let's hope we don't get any kind of errors. Seat's back in, nothing's damaged, nothing's scratched, nothing's messed up. And so now, let's get this, reconnect our battery. And we'll go take it for a drive. That's about it. All right, one thing I'm unsure of, I don't think there's any adaptation. I think it just works. So let's see if I can feel the difference for a cost. Okay. Lunchtime, anyway. Shoot, normally, I mean, you guys see the videos and I edit them down, but normally it takes me hours to get stuff done. This one was a pretty quick process for me. I'm getting better. Same thing with my radar detector and everything. Went pretty smoothly. I guess this is my, uh, 17th install of a uh, stuff on a GT3, but I've never done a DSC controller. It's the first time. So I noticed on the Corvette, even though I didn't have a lot of like back-to-back -back AB, yeah, I already noticed it. Just the little little bumps in the road. It just smoother, not as um, pronounced. I'll try this out. Now, I'm guessing there's going to be a little bit of a difference between, a little bit more of a difference between the sport mode and normal chassis. Let's just drive over some reflectors here. Yeah, dude, I, we'll find out in a minute here. Nobody goes this way. All right, we'll do similar driving. Yeah, the car already feels more, feels a little bit more um, smooth. Now this is a super smooth road, but what I'm hoping is it dials in our, what I talked about earlier, which was my um, reluctancy to corner or enter Let's say enter the corner. This would be a good test here. This is a real bumpy spot. Oh, dude. It's... It's noticeable. Noticeable. So 
said I was afraid of spending all that money on that little box and not getting anything out of it, but I think it's safe to say it's better. I'll let that sat I'm letting that Saturn get a, a bit of a head start here. And we have room to run around these turns up here, but yeah. So I'm gonna talk to the guys, I'll do a follow-up uh, about when I lower the front end, what happens? How does the software respond to that? Does it need to? Does height, height matter? I enter, like I've been talking about. So much traffic out here. Where are these people going? We're supposed to be at home. I'm just making a video. Otherwise, I'd be either at home or at the garage. It's, I, I wish I had the words for it. the uh, floatiness is all, all gone. So let's just do a uh, so sport selected. So for those of you who are wondering, you know, the, uh, the, the difference between um, sport chassis and um, regular is, is pretty minimal. So I, I find myself on the street very rarely ever ever needing that that mode I, I will use it in the mountains on the smoother roads uh you certainly use it on the track i guess but um it's a very subtle difference from what i understand and talking to some friends that have the dsc controller there's a little bit bigger of a delta now between the sport and normal chassis selection uh, so just something to consider no error codes there's not really any indication that you've done anything. That's those are the kind of modifications that I like to do, even if it's expensive and subtle. If it's you know if it's simple and and makes a slight improvement, but doesn't have any drawback. There's no negative effect, and that's what we're that's what I'm looking for. But I think uh, I think pricing was thirteen hundred dollars on this. You know, for someone like me who's driving around the neighborhood here and not. Uh, not not doing a, a lot of aggressive track driving. I don't know. Um, I don't know how justifiable it is, you know, the, to the wife when you get this box. But when you're a couple hundred thousand dollars into a car to make a slight improvement for a thousand bucks doesn't seem all that out of the question. So it's just something you could always sell, use it, and sell it. Oh yeah, this road is pretty rough here. Just the difference in how the car feels, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. Back to regular. Yeah. 
I, I bought this, so no sponsorship. I bought this darn thing. Buy it if you have GT3. I should uh, I should become a retailer for this because probably gonna sell a bunch of them. It's it's subtle, so don't expect a life changing difference. But on I yeah, it's good. I don't know if I'm using the right term, but the damping, the absorption, and the reaction to these little floaty bumps. Where before I was, you know, lacked confidence in the car. And I'm just driving, you know, 60 miles an hour. I'm not doing anything crazy. It's just, just better. Just the shifts in this dot too. You thought they're good in the previous gen. They're just even better. That's a DSC controller. Simple modification, easy to do, no drawbacks, especially if you don't have a roll bar. Um, RS, GT3, definitely on the dot two. I never really, I thought about it on my dot one, but I just, you know, I just never bought it. I didn't, you know, it, I, I felt like on this car with the kind of floatiness that I was feeling that, I, you know, this one I'd give it a shot. And it, it changes it. To all my GT3 buddies. I'm definitely getting one of these for my GT4 too. GT4 is due in July. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to go grab some lunch. I guess edit this video and... Uh, or some video. And go back to the garage and do more stuff. I'll catch you guys on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more crazy. Lots of uh, lots of Porsche detailing coming up here real soon. Catch you soon. Always courtesy, Rev.